are the owner of this um, place. We are based in Montreal, but we are working with people all around the globe. So yeah. just make us a short introduction about who you are and what it is that you do. Well, first of all, I'm a, I'm a mom of two kids, so you might see them walking around. Um, <laughs> I told them to, you know, avoid talking to me, but they, they're around, they're in the kitchen, they're making their own lunch, so eight and a half and 11. And I'm the owner of a translation business that I started actually when I was on maternity leave with my first. So it's going to be 11 years on uh, the 10th of August. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, I I run the company. That's basically what I do. Um, and I'm at I'm still at the stage where I need to do. You know, I do the the bulk of the translation for my business, uh, and I have clients from all over, uh, mainly Canada and the U.S. And uh, also, I outsource uh, some work to other translators and proofreaders. Yeah. So you started this when you were uh, on your maternity leave, right? Yes. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 11 years on August the 10th. So at this time, uh, uh, almost 11 years ago, I was at home with a four month old and uh, I was... Um, I was getting bored. Um, I come from a uh, community work background. I have a degree in human relations from uh, one of the universities here in Montreal. And I couldn't see myself going back to work in my community, uh, in, in the community work. My contract was up also at that place. And I didn't want to work outside the home because I saw a lot of my, uh, my former colleagues burning out and trying to struggle like work-life balance, which is another topic all of itself. So, uh, so anyway, to make a long story short, I'd always done translation because I'm fluent in uh, both French and English and somebody approached me to do it again. And this time, uh, they asked me to write an invoice. So I wrote an invoice and that was, that was it. <laughs> then I, then I start slowly, uh, started building my business. And for the first four years, uh, I was either on mat leave or building my business and working about 20 hours per, uh, part time for a local business here. And then at one point, I just had to uh, just keep the mom role and the uh, business owner role because the part time job, I no longer had time for it. Mm hmm. Well, I love that. The fact that at one point you kind of had to decide that your priorities are only this uh, probably yeah. difficult, right? There were challenges. Yes. Um, and still you were able to make that switch and say, okay, from now on, this is what I'm going to invest myself into. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So like I have it in my soul because uh, uh, Julie just told me before we started the live that she just came back from a Tony Robbins event in the States. And I like, I want to focus on everything else that we want to discuss, but this is taking a lot of space because I'm super curious. So what was it? Was it Date of Destiny? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, no, actually, it was unleashed a power within, and the, the the whole the whole podcast could be about that, and I I, and I wouldn't even mind. Like, I'm not here to, you know, uh, promote my services. It's fine if people use me, but also uh, I like people to get to know me, and what I'm passionate about is yeah. is what I can share with people. So, uh, uh, yeah, I went to see unleashed a power within. Uh, it was in uh, in New Jersey, in Newark, New Jersey, close to uh, the airport at the Prudential Centers. Uh, the Prudential Center is where the uh, New Jersey Devils play hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was 14,000 people. And uh, I was telling you before we got uh, live that we, we went live that this is not my usual voice. Uh, my usual voice is not as raspy. It's a bit more clear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's as energetic as it gets for today. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I uh, it was a, uh, it was a dream. It was, it was on my bucket list. It was on mm -hmm. my uh, list of goals for this year. And I'm fortunate enough that Tony came to Montreal in March of this year for a few hours, and he gave a talk for three and a half hours. I'd already signed for Unleash the Power Within, but that just validated how much I wanted to go. So I spent four days. Um, uh, long days, like really long days, especially days with Tony, because he shares the stage with another guy. Like day one and three is Tony. There two, day two and four is Joseph Clarendon. Mm -hmm. But the days with with Tony, Tony has no concept of time, and uh, it just goes like on and on and on. And uh, you know where you know where when it starts, but you don't know when, when it ends. And it's very very empowering and transformative. Yeah. So I'm really curious. What is it like the top? nugget or what is it that you think you took out of this uh, this experience um 
well, I don't know if anyone knows here, but you can also look it up on Wikipedia, but or maybe on Tony Robbins' website, The Firewalk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically uh, what it is, is they burn a fire for all day. And at the end of the day, all you have are uh, uh, the, I can't find the, the word right now. But anyway, it'll come back to me. Yeah, uh, of- uh, yeah, but it's not the ashes. It's the actual, you know, like charcoal. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah. Okay. So it's like kind of like working, walking on your barbecue at like 2000 degrees and uh, you just, uh, he, he, he prepares you for like two hours and then you go, that's the day one and you walk on fire. So yeah. uh, I, I did that. Uh, so that, that's about uh, surmounting our fears, mm-hmm. uh, leaving the past behind, but also like stepping over any fear. You know, if you can, if you can walk on fire, you can do anything. You know, like a little, little steps, like making a, a a call to a phone call to a prospect is nothing compared to like, you know, taking off your shoes and walking barefoot in the streets of New Jersey to begin with before you get there. Cause we all leave our, our, our shoes back at the state, at the uh, center and walking, you know, barefoot in the States of New Jersey and then walking on fire is, uh, is really, really, really something else. So I took that and also, um, a lot he did like a big, big, big transformation exercise, which, which I won't go into, but it's very, uh, it's very empowering in terms of uh, going for what we want mm-hmm. and the price that we pay if we do not follow our dreams. Oh, I'm curious about this one. So what, yeah. what, so I imagine that this is a very personal experience, right? Yes. So yes. You have to undergo this exercise all by yourself and what yeah. came up for you? Like what would it have what would have your life looked like uh, had you not gone for your dreams? If I don't go for my dreams, I'm letting myself down and I'm letting my kids down. And I, and, and I risk for myself what it came down to is, is I risk being, uh, being depressed. I mm-hmm. risk uh, settling for less than what I, what I think I deserve. And my standards are different from your standards. But it was all about raising my standards, you know, what I do settle for and what I don't settle for, for in terms of, in terms of money, in terms of, uh, of success for my business, in terms of the life I want for my kids. But also, for me, the big one was in terms of uh, personal relationships with a partner, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I imagine that this is at this moment, one of your focuses, right? Like yeah. improve your, your partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Right now I'm single, but to attract that kind of person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that I that I want, you know, and I need someone who's uh, who's on the same road as me in terms of personal development and wanting to grow. Uh, I often settle for people who uh, don't have as uh, high standards as I do, and I settle. Is it okay for for us to go a little bit in depth into that? Because I think that yeah. this is relevant for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I know that it is relevant for me. So, like, one of my topics is uh, why is it that I'm constantly attracting a certain type of people in my life? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, did you go? Did you explore this? Yeah. Why is it that you were attracting this kind of people in your life? This kind uh, of partners? Yeah. Well, I I I did explore it in the fact that there are certain things that. There are certain things because I, I, and I can say that it's not like my dad is going to listen to this, but uh, uh, my dad was a really, really hard worker and he worked a lot of hours. Um, he owned, he owned the business. He made a lot of money owning a business. He had a restaurant and uh, because of that, he wasn't home. He Mm -hmm. wasn't home much. The restaurant was downstairs from our place, but he was not home much. And I know that one of the reasons that uh, my parents' relationship did not work, uh, they divorced when I was five or six, is because uh, they never saw each other. They were never home. They had no couple life. So uh, unconsciously, and I only realized this like a while ago because I'm 48 and I only realized this a month ago, that I attract men who don't have that kind of ambition and that kind of work ethic and that kind of drive that my father had at the time because I want the the man to be there. But then at the same time, it's contradictory because I live alone with my two kids. I'm a single mom. Their dad is in the picture, but I live alone with my two kids. I have them most of the time and I don't want a partner living with me, but I do want to have a partner to do things with, you know, but I, I usually end up with uh, male partners that, um, that don't have much, uh, much ambition and their standards aren't uh, too high they they will settle for like you know not doing anything basically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, or they or they have all those dreams of what they want to do and i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and six and a half years later they're like worse off than what you meant them you know or something yeah. like that yeah. yeah 
So what I'm hearing in this is actually that you are going to this goal because you think that they will be much more emotionally available for you because their goals will not stand in the way of uh, yeah. your partnership and your relationship. Yeah, exactly. And I'm curious, do you have you seen um, this kind of a pattern in business or did it impact in any way your business? Actually, it's uh, it's that's uh, that that's I, I love that question because uh, a year and a half ago, uh, my business was not doing as well as it's doing now because I um, well two years ago I I, could, I was not in a position where I could network because I I was alone with my kids at home and they were young. And then they got older and I started to network. And then when I started to network, I started to realize that how the biz how all the business that I could attract in my business, but I felt that I had reached a certain point where I no longer knew what I needed to do to grow my, my business, you know, by myself. Mm -hmm. So I started shopping for a business coach and uh, I found a business coach and that changed like everything just in like one year of hiring a coach. I, uh, I built like $16,000 more. Uh, I attracted, uh, I don't know how many new clients, uh it was really like it's it, it made such a difference and yes i i was settling in my business but i didn't know i was settling because i didn't know for me it was a means to an end to have my business it was like a way for me to stay home work from home have my own schedule and be able to be there for my kids when they left in the morning when they came home from school but now it's no longer a means to an end it's my business it's not a hobby so i have started treating treating my business like a business And that made all the difference, but I couldn't do it alone. So I hired a coach. Yeah, I hear you. And I think that that's a, such an important, such an important mind shift when you actually realize that you were keeping your business as like a side hustle or something. Yeah. The priority was basically your lifestyle, right? Or your yeah. family, family style. I think it's really, really important. And the fact that you invest in a business coach. It, it makes all the difference in the world. I've been, I've been through that too. And the immense work that you are putting, you have somebody who's holding you accountable, right? And yeah. you have somebody who's looking at you and is seeing beyond what you are seeing in that very moment. And is yes. seeing the, the transformation that can take place if you are allowed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you said the word, you said invest in a coach. It's an investment. Yeah. It's not ex an expense. The yeah. investment that I made, you know, I got I got all that money back and, and more. And now I'm in a new uh, coaching program and it's the same thing. The money that I invest there is like I, I, I know I'm going to see much more of it, you know. Yeah. And I yeah. and I also uh, in terms of settling, you know, like I, I also work with a uh, like she's an administrative assistant, but like more about like business and what to accept in terms of new clients. And I realized a few weeks ago that I was taking on some new clients or old clients that were not that at the end of the day once the once i've built them once i've done the translation and once i've sent it to revision and once i've sent it to the client like i'm not making money mm -hmm. you know i might be charging the client you know a hundred dollars but that hundred dollars once my time is paid and my staff is paid and the time i've spent with the client it's gone i'm i'm at zero Mm -hmm. so it was it's also about and you know like I don't know how she set up that exercise but the way she did it it's very clear to me now that since then there's two clients that I said listen I I my my plate is too full right now and it is you know and I can't take that on so mm -hmm. I I hire refer them to someone or I ask them to find someone that they, that can do it is it because these clients were at the say uh, were at a certain level like a certain price level and you actually realize that you are wasting your time because you they want don't to get, they don't basically uh, my my price is my price all the time like mm -hmm. uh, in the ter you know in translation we charge per it's rare that we charge per hour we mm -hmm. charge per word but you know when when you have like a one pager to translate for someone and uh, mm -hmm. you know like let's say a two page document and uh, you charge them like a hundred dollars it's it's not it's not enough yeah what what what, what she suggests that we do, we do and what i want to do is i want to raise my my uh, my uh, average of how you know what the amount of this the the sale amount as compared to the amount of clients that i have in one month you know if mm -hmm. this client is uh, if an, an average client is worth like three hundred dollars well you know uh, i want to raise that price you know no an average client in for one contract is worth 
like 400 or 500, you know, mm -hmm. go, for, go for bigger, you know, less clients, but bigger sales. Yeah. And I think it's also um, a question of quality over quantity. Exactly. Um, we're just starting like we are, oh, there's money there. So I'm just going to go there. Yeah. And actually, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't pay off at the end. Your yeah. value is your value. And I, I think it's a super important lesson, but like, yeah, it takes a lot, a little bit of experience and some time to, to learn this lesson. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like our time is worth a certain amount of money, yeah. you know, and uh, my time is my time is not worth like twenty dollars or thirty dollars an hour. I'm not going to I'm not going to achieve anything with that. I'm just going to be running like, a, you know, like a dog chasing its tail. That's, mm -hmm. that's what you end up doing, you know, so it's yeah. what how much I value my time and what I'm willing to take on in terms of work. And, and clients will respect that, you know, you, you, your plate is too full. You don't have time. But you suggest that they, you know, what, what I try and do is I have people that I know that I can refer them to. Mm -hmm. And if, if those people want to take like a little contract like that, that's fine. But for me, it's, it's not, it's a waste of time at the end of the day. Not yeah. the client, but the work. Because yeah. clients, like, you know, it's not like people are a waste of time. But <laughs> yeah, the contract itself is a waste of my time. Yeah. And that's hard because in my head, I'm like, oh, if I say no, then I'm losing money. But I'm losing money by doing it because I could be doing something else that's much more lucrative for my business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So going back to the Tony Robbins experience, um, how does success look like after this experience? After the uh, Tony, Tony, Tony Robbins? Did this it guy, shift yeah, your perspective the, on what yeah. success looks like? Uh, <laughs> Yes and no, because I had an idea of what success looks like. But when you're when you're surrounded by 14,000 people and some of them, some of them, there was one guy there like he's uh, he's uh, 23 years old and uh, he's making um, he's making three million already. Mm -hmm. And he's 23 years old, you know, and he started like by going to Tony Robbins events and eventually he developed. He took his courses and developed his business. So why would it be different for me? For me you know there was a couple of dentists next to us they work on jupiter island and you know they make like uh, tons of money well i can I, I i'm not a dentist but i can grow my business to a level where where i can have like you know a lot of money and it's okay for me it's okay you know uh what's uh, i want for me the big thing is i also want to contribute to the world you know so with some clients I work with, for example, uh, charity organizations, I give them a certain percentage of what I charge them. I charge them less and I give their organization a donation because for me, it's important to give, to give back, not just do the work to do the work, but to have some kind of significance, you know, in, in what I do. And it's changed in terms of, you know, like for me, like it's not that. Not that it was not possible before, but when you see like 14 people motivated, you know, to make their dreams come true, whatever that looks like, it's kind of like, and you see them screaming and talking about their vision and blah, blah, blah. It makes, it makes it possible for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very important thing to like just be in that energy and bathe in that energy of people who are driven and focused and determined. It kind of rubs onto you. Of course, there's yeah. a downside. Sometimes you just keep like it happens. No, there are these people who are yeah. going like I used to do that uh, to go to conferences and have like a really high level of motivation. And after a few weeks, to yeah. Do yeah, and it's important to keep for me. I'm all about rituals. It's important to keep yeah. doing certain things that I'm that are going to get me there. You know, like so, I read my I read my business goals every day. Mm -hmm. I meditate. I I write. You know, and a lot of what I write is how I want my life to be, or how it is already, or what I want to manifest. Uh, there are certain things that I do. It's about discipline. I can't come back from if I want my life to be at a level where I want it to be. There's work that needs to be done. That's for sure. But the way that I find that Tony Robbins made it look is like it's not that hard, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like just increase. For example, I was talking again of, uh, you know, my my amount per tra per transaction, you know, that somebody was saying just increase it by three percent. What's three percent, you know, but three percent this year, three percent next year, three percent or three percent this month and three percent next month. It's like compound interest, you know, if you want. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah. So this is what strategy did you did you come up with after after this experience to grow your business? So I hear that 
like increasing your um, transaction by three percent, right? Well, that was not so much that that was not so much at, uh, with Tony Robbins. I was looking mm -hmm. at lo looking at it with my with a uh, I call her like a strategist that I that I work with. It was looking at that, you know. But it was it was more about again, you know. I was settling for like little contracts when I could be settling for much bigger contract. You know, mm -hmm. that's one thing that I learned. Uh, but the big thing was not settling. Like that's the big, big thing that I got out of the conference. Don't settle, raise your standard. And he says it, you know, step up, step yeah. up, you know? Yeah. 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 And I, I hear something. Uh, so I imagine that it's not, it's not enough to just raise your standards. You have to like, raise your the value that you are creating and actually raise the quality of work that you are providing right yeah yeah so you constantly improve yourself so as to be able to constantly raise the stakes for your clients too exactly and exactly and you know i said at the beginning i want people to work with me that they work with me not work with mm -hmm. you know they're like how many translators out there and i'm a proofreader as well how many proofreaders are there out there well there's tons there's tons you can yeah. get your best friend to do it you know some people are very good at at languages and at writing so mm -hmm. why me you know why go with me and i want yeah. people to work with me so you know for me like uh, i spoke to a few clients this week and uh, it was like uh, Hi, how you doing? Oh, doing good. So uh, I, I always say, sorry for my voice. I spent the weekend at a Tony <laughs> Robbins event. And then, oh, yeah, that is so cool. And what happened? And, oh, I know such and such who went or whatever, you know. I'm not talking about a transaction here. I'm just talking about my experience, you mm. know. And I also have a, uh, a newsletter where I don't always talk about business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What, do you, what do you share through your newsletter? My newsletter, uh, different, you know, it has like different formats. Sometimes I'll have like a promotion. I always have a testimonial at the end for one from one of my clients. Uh, I share uh, free tools of, uh, you know, because in Quebec we have, uh, there's language laws. So sometimes I'll send a, a link to, uh, to a tool that's going to help you translate like a word. Let's say you're writing yourself, you're doing your own translation stuff, but there's words that you don't know. How to translate there's tools for that so i give free, free tools i always tell them what i'm up to like the whole the whole thing on my <laughs> newsletter they know that i was going to see tony robbins you know and next month they are going to know that i went to see tony robbins and they're going to know that it's my business anniversary and they're going to know that i have a promotion to celebrate that and they're going to know that i you know but that people are talking about me like the testimonials when i launched my website last month it was the same thing hang on one second okay Les enfants, je téléphone, okay? <laughs> that was French, by the way. <laughs> I heard it well, loud and clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, my newsletter is I just share like you know personal stuff, but also like business stuff, and I yeah. feature other businesses and I give credits to some people, and mm. it's just fun. It's once a month. I want to increase that, but for for now, it's once a month. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I I think that there is a personal touch, right? And it's all about creating like a relationship and enhancing and engaging with with your community and with your tribe. Um, yeah. it's a way of selling, but like not aggressively and directly yeah. selling. Yeah. It's being top of mind so that when people, uh, uh, you know, all my clients are on my list, but when people are looking for a a, tri a friend is looking for a translator. You know, a mm -hmm. friend of someone on my newsletter, well, they think of me because they've been getting my newsletter for like five months and they know that that's what I do. Yeah. 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 Cool, cool, cool. Um, okay. <laughs> so I want to like hear more and more about the Tony Robbins experience. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, um, a group. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, oh, I, I haven't. There was people from 72 countries there. So I don't know where you are exactly. Where are you? So now I'm I'm in Romania and I was okay. planning actually to go uh, late um, this April. He was in London, so I think that that's yeah. the only event in Europe. Yeah. And I missed it. <laughs> but today, before this, I was I was taking a look at the events, and he's coming back in uh, 2018. So go not... go go! I I like I can't say enough about this. Just just yeah. go, yeah yeah. And if you go, let me know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, so this is kind of a wrap just before um, finish ending this. I want to know who else inspires you, Julie? 
Ah, uh, ooh, Alison Pryor is me. Uh, I don't follow her as much as I used to, but Oprah Winfrey is a big mm -hmm. thing because she's uh, she did she surmounted like Tony Robbins was talking about her, you know, yeah. like the things, the stuff that she surmounted in her life and how she is today and how she's making a difference, you know, opening yeah. schools in Africa and all kinds of all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I like, uh, you know, I like podcasters, so I mm -hmm. listen to a lot of podcasters that a few like coaches out, out there and you know like Tim Ferriss is a bit like yeah. far out you know the four hour work week but at the same time a lot of stuff that he says makes sense I'm a big proponent of the uh, Miracle Morning so the book mm -hmm. uh, written by Hal Elrod and I follow his podcast right now he's battling cancer so somebody else is doing his podcast but I'm I, and I'm inspired also by by everyday people Everyday people, people who are driven just to make a difference, like the people I met at the event, the people I went to the event with, just like, you know, just, uh, I love the human race. I love watching people. I love getting to know people. Uh, I'm passionate about personal development. So the, a lot of authors on that are, are really, uh, are really uh, inspiring for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing. Really, it was a pleasure having you. My I love pleasure. That talk about all this. Um, just to let people know, so they can find you on your website. Yes. Um, and this is the link, so it's basically your name. Um, and then they yeah. can also find you on. So through your website, they can find you on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, this is your Facebook, so if they want to yeah. go direct on your Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> just go through here um and i really like i i forgot to share at the beginning your slogan like your motto and this was we make every word count and I actually yeah. wanted to talk about that too so like how kind of words create reality and we create yes. uh, through, through language but yes. on, on a different on a different uh, occasion yeah <laughs> yeah exactly we'll talk about it some other time and And also, I just like to say we talked a lot about translation, but I also do a lot of proofreading, you know. So that's why mm -hmm. it's we make every word count, you know, not like we trans we translate every word or whatever, or we turn your words into a different language. It's really we make every every word count, whatever we do. Yeah, cool, cool. I love that. So we are just gonna end on this note because I love that we make every word count. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. Have a happy See you later. Day. Bye-bye. <laughs>